The objective in this analysis is to take a stack of images that clearly contain a very nice structure from a Millennium 3D and Solver 2S and use these to help analyze the peak composition that lies beneath such a complex envelope as this. So we'll begin first of all by actually reducing the number of images that we're going to analyze by simply offsetting one set in terms of the column in the right hand side, I'll call that B, press OK and you can see that we then get a movement of the every other VAMAS block to a second column and this one here will still contain sufficient information when I display the spectrum generated from this using all of the pixels, so I'm summing all the pixels and the step size is sufficient to to keep a, a well-formed spectrum even though I've discounted half of the acquisition and this will help us to compare the process versus the raw data because I can simply select these and overlay them to see the corresponding spectrum from the next set of, of images. So Let's go back here to the first column and I will now select not a box, this box here is summing all the pixels within it I'm now going to select a single point. So this is what a spectrum looks like at that this point here. So if I select the second column overlay you can see there's a, another noisy spectrum. So let's go back to the one we're going to process and the first thing we'll do is we'll go to the outlier filter option give it 90 percent and five iterations and this will just clean up the unusual pixels within these images and help to create what you can now see a slightly more obvious spectrum you've got a couple of peaks here and another one forming here so even just doing a, an outlier filter has cleaned up the spectrum immensely and now let's go to the options on the image processing page I'm going to select to calculate 10 abstract factors and I'm going to use 8 of them to reconstruct the data I'm working on the basis that there will be m more than or less than 8 abstract factors that are significant to the data so I press this button here and when I recre recreate this data set using 8 then I will include some noise in the spectra so as you can see there's a, an element of noise here but clearly now at a pixel we have a spectrum uh, which is quite obviously the molybdenum uh, disulfide with some molybdenum oxide mixed in there as well and if I now overlay the unprocessed data that are offset by 0.1 of an EV you can now see the comparison between a unprocessed form and the process form so let's use the process form and create some spectra and here I can once again th this is a, a set of VAMAS blocks each VAMAS block contains a row of spectra corresponding to the data in the images and if I step across by holding the control key down we can see these spectra that are within these VAMAS blocks alternatively what we can do is we can go over here and say convert the corresponding variables and that's where all these spectra are stored to individual VAMAS blocks so when I do this I create not a column of VAMAS blocks but an array of VAMAS blocks and within each VAMAS block there's an individual spectrum and again I can move around and you can see that we've got although they are not perfect spectra we've got 16,000 spectra that are showing us the relationship between the molybdenum disulfide and the molybdenum oxide that's on the surface so I'll close that because that was just to illustrate the number of spectra that are genuinely underlying these measurements and the thing that we would like to do is get a rough idea of the distribution of these different materials uh, the oxide versus the sulfide uh, with the molybdenum so let's first of all just put on a background so we have a we'll just use a basic Shirley background for this analysis um, 
and if we then create another region I can then adjust that region to span one of these peaks and if it calculates the Shirley background it's not going to be very good approximation so what I'll do is I'll put skip so it doesn't calculate a background but it'll use whatever background went before so this Shirley background here is now the one that's been used for this peak this region here and this is going to be oxide now I'm going to create another one and it's going to remember that I used skip before I'll just put you that an average width of zero since it actually has no effect on the skip background that's just related to the the Shirley and I might as well actually make that two give it a bit more stability at the ends of the region defining the background and this third region I'm going to slide across and this one is going to be located on this doublet peak and that one I believe to be a combination of the oxide and the sulfide and one more and this one is going to be positioned across the five halves peak of the molybdenum 3D and that one is the sulfide and then I can do one more which will be the sulfur 2s now I'll mark that as sulfur 2s why not and if I now propagate these regions to all of these VAMAS blocks I get a background and I get these regions on each one of these VAMAS blocks which I can then use to create images so for each region that I've got defined here I'm going to create an image and from these images I will be able to create atomic or rather percent area images so let's convert regions to images and now we have a set of images we've got one for each region that was defined this one's the total this is the the oxide this one is the combination of oxide and sulfide that's the sulfide and that's the S, uh, sulfur 2s so we'll just use these images here and we will then quantify that means we're going to divide by the total area so now we've got an oxygen bonded with molybdenum that's the combination of the two and that's the sul molybdenum from that's bonded with sulfur and there's another one so we'll go with this one here as a measure of the distribution of molybdenum disulfide and this will represent the molybdenum oxide so let's copy that so we can work on it a bit without interfering with the original image and what we'll do is we'll just apply a few smoothing operations here and the idea is actually to try and unify the intensity associated with these different zones so there's sulfide oxide and what I want to do now is go to the false color and I'll mark out the intensities over which I want false colors to be defined I'll use a bicolor use histogram equalization I'll go with six colors and press OK so now we get a set of colors that have been assigned to the pixels uh, in this image and each one of these colors can, can be used to some spectra so what we'll do is we'll define that as the mask that's going to be used in the analysis and what we'll do now is we will look at raw images and take raw spectra and we'll sum these raw spectra using those false colors and that gives us a set of six different spectra calculated from those different intensities so these two this one and this one ought to be very closely associated with 
uh, an oxide and these two ought to be very closely associated with a, a sulfide and you can see that the sulfide peak is dot is much larger here than it is in these two peaks so what we'll do is a little bit of analysis based on manipulating these intensities as vectors and the first thing we'll do is add a couple of these together that we can see make sense in terms of one form and the other and the idea we're trying to improve signal to noise when you do manipulation of these as vectors uh, noise tends to be amplified so it's always a good idea to have the best signal to noise that you can achieve with data so I've got two spectra here one that favors the sulfide one that favors the oxide and I'm going to go onto the calculator property page and I'm going to send 0.2 for my factor between these different spectra that I now calculate and if I step down here let me just close these dialog windows you can see let me just also put up a display so it's obvious what's happening but with each step the spectra change and I'm now subtracting these data and displaying the different spectrum to the point that I can now see that I'm getting something that looks like it's got predominantly molybdenum disulfide and some sort of perhaps some oxide here but that'll do for a first approximation so let's take that one and I will copy that and that gives me my first spectrum that, I, that might be of interest and now I think I like this one also so I'm going to copy that one and then we'll keep on going down and you can see that the contribution of the oxygen is starting to go negative and the idea is that what we're going to find now is a peak shape an envelope structure that might just give us an alternative perspective of these data and I think that one might do it so let's copy that one okay so I've got three spectra that I've calculated and I think we'll go with these two and I'm going to move these back to the original the lookup table spectra so that I've got these as two basis functions that I can put into here and I can see how these now can be used to decompose the rest of these spectra that I didn't use in the calculation so I use these two to calculate the different spectra and now I am applying a least squares principle to create a set of approximations to the original lookup table spectra so the first lookup table spectrum that was mostly oxide contains a proportion of this spectrum and a proportion of this one and so we have a pretty good approximation the black and the red are the original is the black and the red is the sum of these two component spectra and if I go down you can see that of the six lookup table spectra that I extracted from those images I've now got good approximations to, to how to decompose these complex envelopes into these less involved envelopes that has very much the structure of molybdenum disulfide and this one looks like molybdenum trioxide maybe 
and some other form.